Hello Panthers, my name is Kingsley and I'd like to welcome you to our first episode of S-Team's new show, The After Hour Interview. Our team will be interviewing new local individuals for each episode. Thank you for tuning in to our show and without further ado, we'll pass on to David with our first interview. Hi, my name is David and today we will be speaking with our middle school principal, Mr. Gerson. Hi, Mr. Gross. Thank, nice to meet you and thank you for making time for this interview. Good afternoon, David. Thanks so much for having me on your After Hours show. I feel honored to be an invited guest. All right, so my first question for you is, there has been recent news from the school district about reopening secondary schools as soon as March 1st. What are you looking forward to and what are your concerns? Well, um, I'm really excited at the opportunity to have students come on campus because I know that many people are excited to come back to the school campus itself for learning. Um, I'm also at the same time kind of nervous about it because uh, there are a lot of logistics that we have to put into place in order to bring everyone back onto campus smoothly. So there's lots of protocols around um, checking in, um, completing health screeners, making sure everybody is you know, wearing a mask while they're here on campus, making sure that everyone is, is six feet apart for social distancing. But um, our, our counseling team and our assistant principals and I, along with our sixth grade teachers, have been working really hard to organize our sixth grade students into groups uh, for hybrid learning. And we're looking forward to them coming back on campus as soon as Tuesday, March 2nd. And now there's news that we are also going to be opening up for seventh and eighth graders. And that was new news for us. That was brand new last week. That just came out last week. So we are now working on those plans too. Um, but I would say I'm most excited to have people in person. And yet I'm also nervous about being in person because I wanna make sure that everyone follows the safety protocols and requirements so that we can maintain our own health and safety. That's nice. My second question for you is, what procedures has our school implemented to plan to take to prevent the COVID-19 pandemic from spreading in the school? Oh, thanks for asking that, David. Um, there are many steps that we've taken. One is that we have deliberately sorted our students into stable cohorts for sixth grade. So that's something that we have to do because the state and county require sixth grade to be considered kind of like elementary age students and therefore in this cohort. Um, but for our seventh and eighth graders, uh, the state and county consider them to be secondary students like high school students. And so um, the, the pr protocols and procedures we've taken include this health screener called Parent Square that we're going to start using, um, mandating that everyone wear masks and stay six feet apart while they are on campus. Uh, and then also doing something called contact tracing, which means that when you are here on campus at school, we have a record of, of where you are sitting in a classroom and who's around you. So that if anyone should have a, um, a positive case, um, we can notify those people as close contacts and then monitor for symptoms. So we have lots of like new steps to follow. Another example is a traffic pattern through the campus. We have arrows and lines and zones of where to be and where not to be. We have new protocols around how to use the bathrooms and restroom areas. So um, there are several new protocols that we're all going to be adapting uh, to. Wow, that's nice. And now on to something more personal. How has the pandemic affected our daily life for the better or worse? What have been some struggles? And if you have, have you learned anything new from this experience? Uh, that's a lot of questions. Um, yeah, I, I think that it's affected my life uh, much in the same way that I imagine it's affected yours. I'm much more uh, accustomed to being online, to uh, being on Zoom, to doing these video chats. I've done video chats before, but it's usually to interview people or to be in an interview interview myself, like over a large, a long distance. But now it's it's so commonplace. Um, I think that it has um, it's made me more aware of how I spend time and how um, how valuable time is. And when I say that, I'm thinking about that better or for worse. Um, a comparison. One of the things that has been a struggle for me is to um, 
manage my time so that I get all my projects done um, while still attending all of these Zoom meetings. Uh, that's a struggle for me because I want to be present in my Zoom conversation, and yet I still have a lot of other work I have to do. Uh, and then um, some of the some of the pluses or some of the benefits um, are that we've been able to do a lot of really cool virtual um, achievements or accomplishments that we wouldn't have been able to do without the technology. Like an example is we had an incredible um, choir concert before the winter break where we had 400 singers all singing at once in one uh, in one piece. We wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, we wouldn't maybe have thought to do that um, had we been in person. But I think my main takeaway from this experience is how, um, how precious our health is and how, um, how important it is to spend your time with um, your loved ones and your family. So yeah, it's been, it's been an adventure to say the least. Throughout the COVID-19 experience, a lot of students have been struggling to stay focused in school or waking up on time. What advice do you give to those, these students? Well, um, the advice I would give includes uh, trying to create a routine for yourself at home. And I, I'm a very routine oriented person, but I feel like it helps me stay balanced and healthy. So um, one example is that I have the same wake up time every day, uh, regardless of my schedule. Uh, and the only day I let myself sleep in is Sundays. And I know that might sound kind of boring, but it's true. I, I wake up every day at 6 a.m. And then um, I usually, um, I usually exercise or, or work. Um, sometimes I get online and I do some projects then in early in the morning before my family wakes up if it's a weekend. But um, I think that getting into the groove of having a set uh, wake up time and bedtime is really, is really healthy. I also think um, other advice is just staying hydrated. I know it sounds really simple, but like I, I always have a water bottle near me and I'm always drinking water throughout the day so that um, I, I don't get headaches that way. Sometimes I've noticed that if I'm on a lot of Zoom calls and I'm not drinking water, I get kind of cranky because I get a headache. Um, and then the other thing that's really important is making time for yourself to get outside and do things that you like doing. Um, I, earlier today, I got out for a walk and I just walked the perimeter of our JLS campus. I walked our field, um, I walked by Fair Meadow, and then I walked through our campus to check our facility just to see how, how things were looking. I took some photos as well, but um, I think that making time for yourself to do things that you really enjoy doing, if that's riding bikes or if it's uh, playing video games or playing a musical instrument or drawing, just preserving that time for things that provide you with a sense of joy is really important because then you will look forward to those things and you'll work through sort of the less um, attractive things that you have to do. If students choose to continue with distance lear learning, what kind of course of action will be taken to help the students continue with at home learning to form a school community and interact with teachers and friends? That's a great question. I think one of the things that we will do when we uh, switch our sixth and our sixth grade students from distance and hybrid to um, to their new groups is make sure that those new classroom communities can become communities. So doing lots of uh, icebreaker activities, kind of like doing um, Panther Camp, but like Panther Camp light, you know, so people can get to know each other and um, build relationships with each other, but then also have more virtual events. Uh, we've had several, sorry, my phone's blowing up with the text messages, I'm distracted by that. So. Uh, We've had lots of virtual events uh, from our incredible leadership class. Like today they had a chess tournament at lunchtime. Um, and then they, they're having other like spirit weeks in the future. Um, and I know that our teams have also had team events in order to really create a sense of um, membership and belonging within the teams. But it's hard, it's really hard to do this online. We don't have the same amount of um, exposure or, or opportunity to get to know people the same way we would if we were in person. Because if you think about like all the passing periods, all the brunch and lunch times, all the time you spend with people either coming to school or leaving school campus, all of those situations are now gone. So people don't have the same um, frequency of social interaction that they used to, at least you know, not in person. But um, I think that one of the main things that we can do is reach out to people who we think aren't doing well. And we have counselors who do that. We have teachers that do that. 
Um, I occasionally do that as well uh, for students that I know personally. And I think it's important that students also, when they feel like they're not, not doing well, that they, they have the courage to reach out and ask for help. I know that that sounds scary, but um, that's, that's what we need right now is people to identify that they're really not doing that great and they, they need help. So either by going to a trusted adult, and that could be a parent or a family friend or a relative um, or a teacher or a counselor here at JLS, um, I would encourage anyone who's not doing really well and who's really struggling to reach out and, and seek help if they have the courage to do so. Thank you for your time, Mr. Grierson. You're welcome, David. Those are some tough questions. Do you have any other questions you want to ask me before we hang up? No. All right. Well, if I could just plug um, office hours for anyone that is interested. I have office hours just like uh, our counselors and just like our teachers. So if anybody ever wants to pop by and say hello or ask me a question, they're more than welcome to do so. Thank you, Mr. Grierson, for your thoughtful response. We appreciate your time for this interview. Now moving on to Bar. Hi, my name is Barr, and today I will be speaking with Ms. Melnick, a 7th and 8th grade science teacher. Hello, Mrs. Melnick. Thank you for joining us today in this interview session. Hi, Barr. My pleasure. <laughs> All right. My first question for you is, what news about, there's been news about reopening schools to all middle school students in March. What are your thoughts about teaching during this pandemic? Do you have any concerns or questions that you feel should be addressed for your hour safety? Oh, that's a big question. Uh, <laughs> well, see, first of all, so I kind of have two reactions about coming back. Um, one is I'm, I'm very much looking forward to having the students come back. Uh, I, uh, I certainly went into teaching in order to be with people and it's, uh, it's actually kind of lonely in, in this in this classroom all by myself and I've I've had the opportunity to work in my own classroom this whole uh, year but I'm, I'm, I'm the only one here so it's uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to looking across the room and seeing other faces in here and that'll be um, so that, you know that'll be that'll be really nice and exciting um, of course on the other hand I am concerned about making sure that we're all safe and that we all wear our masks and we all do what we can to make sure that we keep each other healthy. Uh, in, in particular, um, I, I don't know about you, but I, I sure miss hugging people <laughs> during this pandemic. And I would imagine that uh, we'll, we'll all really need to fight the urge to be near each other and to hug each other. And that's going to be a challenge, but, um, but, you know, but I think we can do it. Right. Okay. I can also relate to all the things that you said. Thanks so much for sharing your uh, side on that. Okay. Sure. So my next question is, what have been some struggles teaching through Zoom? How do you, uh, how can you help students stay focused during class and stay on track while working on assignments? Another big question <laughs> and, and a good one. Um, well, one of the, certainly one of the biggest struggles I think for me for teaching during this pandemic and doing distance learning, uh, this, this is not what I learned at all in teacher school <laughs> many, many, many years ago. Uh, of course, all of, my, all of my training and my experience has been in-person teaching. So I've had, to, I've had to learn a lot about technology and I mean, just Zoom in general, you know, about a year ago, I, if you asked me what Zoom was, I would have told you it was a Disney movie, but you know now I know uh, a lot more about uh, how, how to use the program and use it well. I think, <laughs> at least I hope. Uh, so that's been uh, you know so that's been something new and it's been a challenge. Um, I'm I'm really very fortunate though that um, all of the teachers at JLS we're, we're like a family, so you reach out and you get a lot of support um, for. You know, just you know, lessons in general, but also you know how best to uh, reach students during distance learning, and you know, in the question of well, how do you make sure that students are you know staying involved and participating? Well, you know, that's a question whether you're in person or distance learning, and um, what I'm hoping is going to be helpful. I started to do something a little bit new during second semester, 
where instead of giving my students in a class after I teach a lesson, after giving, uh, instead of giving everyone the same activity to do, um, I'm offering um, three different levels and uh, mild, medium, and spicy. And my hope is that uh, for students who need a little extra challenge that maybe that spicy level, which is, you know, almost like high school level, um, that that might help to keep them interested and engaged, but also the students who um, need some more review or just need something a little bit more basic to start off uh, will feel um, good about doing the mild and the medium level. So, you know, trying, trying to do what I can. I'm glad I can meet with students privately in breakout rooms so I can get to know them a little bit more as people. So that's, um, you know, that's, but I'm always, I'm always open for suggestion and how to make things better. That's for sure. Well, thanks. That was very interesting. Okay. <laughs> so my next question is sitting down for a long time and constantly staring at computer screens can be very hard. And there are, do you have any tips for people that have difficulty with this? Absolutely. I, I have been doing this in my lessons or trying to do this as often as I can in my lessons is to have stretch breaks, just to give us permission to stand up and walk away from our screen. So for my, whether it's in my seventh grade or my eighth grade classes, I have what I call a stretch break. And usually it's for about four minutes. And I highly encourage everyone to uh, just, you know, get up and walk away. Now, most of my students have cameras off, so I don't really know if they're taking a stretch break. Um, but, but my hope is that they are just to go ahead and, uh, you know, rest their eyes and get a little bit more um, uh, exercise. Now, the one day I don't do that is on Mondays because it's a, you know, shorter time. But, uh, but that's what I, that's, you know, that's my way of, you know, trying to deal with that. Okay, thanks for all those tips. It was really very helpful. Okay, so this is our final question. How has the pandemic affected your daily life for the better or for the worse? If you have, did you learn anything new from this experience? Oh, definitely. Gosh, uh, well, certainly I, 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 I'm, I'm almost a master of Zoom, which feels really good. So I've been learning a lot about that. Uh, and not just for school. I, that's, that's how I connect. Um, I, have, I, I have a brother who lives in, I have two baby brothers. And I have one baby brother who lives in uh, Virginia. And I have another baby brother who lives in Japan. So uh, one of the, and we've been struggling to figure out ways to all three connect at the same time. And Zoom has been super helpful with that. So that's been, that's been really great. Um, I also have been um, uh, keeping myself open to uh, learning, learning some new things that don't have anything to do with teaching or school because that's, you know, so, so important. And, uh, you know, in particular, um, I ended up uh, learning about one of my students who in particular, uh, the student is a, a very dedicated soccer player and cares very much about um, uh, being the best player that this person can be. And, and this person even shared with me about, about a month ago that uh, not only do they make sure that they are practicing in the afternoons with their team whenever they have practice, um, but they also make sure that they practice on their own every single morning for like one to two hours. And I thought that I, I just really admire that that type of dedication. And there's I, there's something that I wanted to do for for quite some time. And I started a long time ago when I was about your age. Um, I I used to be a dancer, and in particular, I uh, I love doing tap dance. And when I was hearing the story from my student about how they really make sure that they um, are doing their soccer and practicing what they care about every single morning. Um, so now I, for the past roughly three weeks, um, every single morning, uh, I, maybe not for two hours, they have, they have more energy than I do, but uh, I, I get up every morning and I uh, put on my tap shoes and I, and I practice my tap in my garage every morning. And, uh, you know, I feel, I feel really good about that. So, um, uh, and another, and that really helps 
with something else that unfortunately I've had to give up during this pandemic, uh, similar to Mr. Molly and to Ms. Fitzhugh, who are also fantastic uh, performers and singers. Um, I've been a community theater performer for a long time. And unfortunately, because we don't have any live theater any longer because of the pandemic, um, then that's been that's been really hard on me. And um, I'm, as I'm sure it is for many performers. And uh, so I've been able to, thank goodness, join some other uh, Zoom groups where we perform for each other and we'll even put on silly costumes and use our virtual backgrounds. And uh, so that's been, so you know, so that's been something that we can, um, you know, help each other get through. Wow, that's very, very inspiring. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me and uh, for finding the time to do this. Absolutely, yeah. thanks for asking me, I appreciate it. Yeah, hope that you have a good rest of the weekend, in fact, by now. <laughs> Thank you, you too. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Melnick, for your thoughtful response. We appreciate your time for this interview. With that being said, now we'll wrap up our interview session. Thank you for tuning in to our first show, and we hope to see you in a few weeks.